Hi all, it's me Anne from Geeks of Green. Today at the plant table, I bring to you one of my favorite and very stunning foliage plants, the Fetonia. This plant is the kind of plant that looks great in small spaces and is really eye-catching as well. I've had so many friends who come over and inquire about this plant. So let's look at all there is to know to master the care of this plant. Before we get talking about the Fetonia care, let me quickly remind you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet and also hit the bell icon for notifications of videos. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well for daily plant updates and also closer interactions and planty talk. Plant background. This plant is native to the tropical rainforest of South America, mainly Peru. It belongs to the Fetonia genus in the family Acanthaceae. The Fetonia albivenis and its cultivars are the ones that are most commonly found in our nurseries. It grows as a terrestrial plant naturally and can be grown as a ground cover as it spreads very well covering patches of soil. Some quick facts. There is another species called the Fetonia gigantea with leaves that are much bigger than the albivenis. There are many cultivars too. The Fetonia is commonly called the nerve plant as the leaves have a bright colored nerve like veining pattern. The Mashiguenga tribe of the Peru rainforest used Fetonia leaves in a hallucinogenic mixture that they used to make. The plant is not kept for its flowers but for the foliage. Tiny flowers grow on little spikes and they can be pinched off so that the plant focuses on growing more leaves. Plant care. Sunlight. The Fetonia grows well in shady spots. The problem with keeping them in a sunny spot is that it will go dry sooner, which will result in crisping leaves. So this plant does well in spots that have mild light. They grow on the ground in the forest where they get dappled to indirect mild light. So that is the kind of light they prefer. Airflow. This plant does not appreciate drying draft. Do not keep it in a spot where there is a lot of breeze and airflow. Don't keep it near the AC vent or right under the fan. The Fetonia thrives in terrarium, so you can imagine how much it likes humidity and how much it would dislike airflow. Water. Do not forget to water this plant. Underwatering is a crime with this one. Do not keep the soil too soggy as well. Ensure that the pot has good drainage, but at the same time, keep it moist enough so that the plant does not wilt. I have seen many people do the thirsty plant stop motion videos where they allow the plant to wilt and then they water it and it dramatically rises up again. I know it's all exciting to see, but avoid putting your plants in such a position as every time you let your plant go dry, you will observe a little damage is done to the plant. So if you want your plant to be healthy, avoid doing this. Misting. These plants will prefer being misted in the dry season. In the summer and winter, I miss them twice a day, once in the morning and once early in the afternoon. Avoid misting your plants at night when the temperatures drop. Soil. A moisture retaining mix is a must. I would recommend using a mixture of cocoa peat, vermicompost, gravel, perlite and vermiculite. This mix will let the roots breathe and at the same time, it will also help you keep the soil evenly moist. I usually use fertilizers like seaweed solution and fish emulsion that can be diluted in water and can be applied very easily over the packed leaves of the Fetonia plant rather than the granular or powder fertilizers that would be very difficult to apply to the plant. You can fertilize your Fetonias maybe once in 15 days if you are using seaweed solution because it's a pretty mild fertilizer. Humidity. The Fetonia loves humidity. I can't stress how much. So if you live in a humid spot or city, this is the plant you should go for. If you live in a dry climate, then think twice. And if you really want to keep the Fetonia, it would be a good idea to invest in a humidifier or put this one in a terrarium. Then maybe you will have success with it. Temperature. The plant won't prefer temperatures under 13 degrees Celsius. 
in such cold conditions it's advisable to get these indoors they will do okay in temperatures between 16 degrees to 25 degrees approximately toxicity the petonia is a non toxic plant and if you have little kids or pets you can keep this plant without any worry if you want to check out other plants that are safe for your pets you can see my older video of pet and kid friendly indoor plants i will leave the link for you in the description down below grooming this plant does not need too much grooming as you would keep watering over the plant leaves to avoid it getting dry occasionally you would have to pluck a dried or a yellowing leaf to have it looking fresh and neat pruning this plant has a tendency to grow leggy if you don't prune it regularly to avoid this you have to keep pinching it back this helps your plant to grow bushy and full growth under the right conditions it grows pretty well especially in the humid rainy season they don't grow very tall but they spread as ground cover propagation you can water propagate this one with ease i will recommend water propagation rather than soil as the chance of letting the plant go dry is higher in soil propagation it roots easily in water and that is why you should pick this method of propagation if you still want to soil propagate remember to use a lot of coco peat and sphagnum moss as your medium using rooting hormone also helps your chances you could also put it under a humidity dome or cloche or a bag to keep it from going dry it is also good idea to propagate during the rainy season because there's a lot of humidity natural humidity in the air problem there are a few problems that i have faced with this plant but i came across a few listed by other gardeners which i will share with you diseases overwatering can be an issue with this plant as we tend to want to keep the plant hydrated we might get over enthusiastic and overwater this plant in case there is no proper drainage the soil can become soggy and the plant might get affected with root rot if your plant has many yellowing leaves this could be an indication of overwatering bacterial infections like the xanthomonas leaf spot are prevalent among petonias and it will show with necrosis that is some tissue will dry or die around the edges of the leaf or near the veins sadly there is not much you can do for the plant once it is infected that is why it's important to mist or water your plant early in the day so that it has time to dry up before the evening sets in fungal infections like the rhizoctonia aerial blight and the southern blight also tend to affect these plants preventative measures by spraying of uh, systemic fun fungicide will help after it is infected there's not much you can do for your plant there are also some viral infections that affect this plant and the best thing you can keep in mind is uh, if you want to avoid any form of bacterial fungal or viral infections just keep your plant dry when the evening sets in the leaves especially because wet leaves are perfect for bacteria and infections to thrive and grow pests slugs snails and caterpillars i have personally had snails slugs and caterpillars chomping on the leaves of these plants so you can set traps for slugs and snails and get rid of these pests you can spot the pests as they are big in size they will be hiding under the cover of the leaves and you can physically remove them they are nocturnal and they get active at night so that is the best time to look out for these kind of pests i've also heard of people who have had issues with aphids mites mealybugs and thrips spraying pesticides or neem oil solution will help a few tips to keep your plant alive all in all the petonia is a tricky plant to keep indoors and outdoors because of its high humidity requirement so keep in mind if you live in a dry place or where the temperatures drop considerably what you can do is put your plants in a humidity box with an led light over it and keep it indoors where the temperature is not very low the petonia doesn't need a lot of light so a simple light will be enough for your plant keep this box covered once you have watered it the plant will stay fresh you could also put it in a closed terrarium 
where it will surely thrive. Also remember, do not leave your plant thirsty and let it wilt. Every time you are doing it, you are damaging your plant and it is getting worse day by day. So don't forget to water it on time and let it not go into that a phase where it wilts and the leaves grow. Bunching them together in one container is a great idea as uh, it gives the plants a better chance of survival. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this helps you take good care of your phytonias. If you benefited from this video, please be kind and remember to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you like all things green. Hit the bell icon for notifications of new videos. I hope to see you soon, very soon in fact, in a new video. Till then, stay green.